Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. Hey, everybody! And this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is the weekend, so today I have Cameron's, I think it's Dark Roast or something, and Splenda, uh, sugar-free vanilla something or other. Not bad. Little, little late in the day for some coffee, but so it goes. So I hope everyone's well, everyone's safe, look after yourselves, people you care about. There's a lot going on here in the States and around the world. So, uh, just keep it together. We'll, we'll be okay. That's the PSA for today. So, we are going to pick up where we left off with our fair lady, Chantal. Chantal Marie, foodie beauty, big beautiful me, the daily Chantal. Chantopolis. I can't even get it done in one breath anymore. And, uh, foodie beauty, of course, again. Now, last week, uh... I was bored <laughs> with a lot of her content. And it was interesting. I was watching some of her lives because she had a few this week. And she was complaining about reactors and this and that. And I don't think she watches my videos, but she did mention a, kind of a rebut of a critique that I did have is that her videos last week were boring. Um, not boring. It was a lot of mukbangs last week. And I wouldn't say they were boring because they were mukbangs. A mukbang needs to be judged by a mukbang standard compared to other mukbangs. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I was watching because I watch Foodie Beauty. <laughs> Whether she's boring or interesting or dieting or, you know, the muckiest of mukbangs or the raciest of... Well, we'll talk about that later too. Um, I just, I watch. So, I watch her videos, I don't use her footage, and I watch her ads. At least I can do if she's going to give me something to talk about on a Saturday. So, this week, um, well, let me see. There's a, let's see, there's some Charlie Gold drama. She was eating with Pete's, and then there was accusations of her being a racist. So, I guess we'll kind of go with that. Now, there were mukbangs again this week, but I thought they were a little more tasteful. And again, comparing, I'll start with this, comparing her mukbangs to other mukbang channels. Because chewing's not for everybody, it's certainly not for me, but for other people, it is. So, looking at her contemporaries, or colleagues in the mukbang community, I'm looking at people like Nikocado Avocado, maybe Stephanie Sue, and what are they doing that she's not doing that their channels are so big? And, of course, we need to pick our heroes carefully, because, you know, she mentions Nikocado Avocado periodically, and I can't stand his, his character. Um, he just tantrums and he carries on and it's his behavior is somewhere between like a sneeze and a grand mal seizure. I just, I don't like him. But, um, if that's what she's shooting for in terms of the size of her channel, the success of her channel, maybe take notes, you know, don't take my notes, take what you think would be theirs. So just putting that out there. So the first video for this week where we left off is the 1969 fondue party mukbang. Cute outfit. She's got a crown of flowers like a flower child. She wears it quite well compared to some other folks who wear flowers on their head. Uh, the food. Okay, so she makes fondue right there in real time. This was cool. This was the kind of eating video mukbang that I could get into. Um, still had a couple chewing noises, but it's a mukbang. Uh, she made it right there. She had the spread in front of her, and she was having Sauvignon Blanc. And, you know, she mixed it in with the cheese and all the fun stuff that makes fondue. And she talked a little bit about the history of the 60s um, music. She started singing Time of the Season. Um, and then she was singing a little Bowie, I think, too. Like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was like, Ground control to Major Tom. Like, out of the blue. And then she goes back to doing whatever. Talked about the moon landing. Again, more about music. Um, this was, she kept saying the food was amazing and amazing, and it was. It was well put together food. So different than watching her plow through a pile of cheeseburgers. I know there's an audience for that. But, and I'm not the kind of person she's probably trying to reel in. Of course, if you're growing your channel, I guess anybody's fair game. But, if I were to stumble on this video as the first video I've ever seen of hers, I, I'd like it. You know, she's personable, there's something more going on than just staring at the camera. Um, I can appreciate for her that maybe having some edibles and getting giddy makes for good content, too. But, uh, this was something a little different, which I liked. Interesting that it was all American history. Um, she was talking about Woodstock and, um, Martin Luther King being assassinated, um, and other things that happened in the 60s. So I can only gather is that there was really no news in Canada at the time. Uh, what was going on in Canada during that period was pretty much the same as the U.S., 
or just because a lot of her viewers are American, she talks about American history. I, I don't know. Um, but she was, as far as I could see, on point with a lot of it. She talked about the conspiracy theory. Sometimes people think the moon landing was faked, but then went on to talk about how the CIA was giving out acid to people to test them for some sort of psychedelic warfare that was going on. She also reiterated that psychedelics aren't for her. Psychedelics aren't for me either. I was a, um, how do they put this? Garbage head <laughs> when it comes to drug and alcohol use. Um, I would take anything on the table. I had had experiences with that and they're not comfortable. There's parts of my subconscious that need to stay sub, sub, below, not, they don't need to work their way up here. Um, and some people I've known go away and don't come back. So I work in the mental health system. I've seen state hospitals. There's very young people there who were just going out for the weekend and they're still out. So, um, again, I thought the video was good. There was eating. I wouldn't say it was binging, but it was decadent food. Uh, the story was there. The facts were kind of cool to keep up with. Uh, she made the food in real time and she dressed for it. It showed effort. It's like, hey guys, I care if you like my video. Here's a little extra something, something, something. Now, maybe I'm biased to that because we try to do what we can with the set we have and, and the stuff we have and, you know, to the extent that we have costumes, you know, we have t-shirts and stuff. Um, so we try to do a little of that. So maybe I see good in that because we try to do that. It's, you know, not everybody's shtick, but that's, you know, I thought it was cool. So next one, Burger King mukbang. This started some heat later. And then what happened Saturday? Now, Saturday, last week, last we checked in, she was going to go to BB's. BB is her ex to anyone who doesn't know. And she was going over there to get the rest of her stuff, which has been there forever. Uh, they were going to watch, I think, a couple movies, and they were going to eat. They were going to have something to eat. So she said nothing happened. She said it was very, you know, blasé. They were just going over, hang out, and she was going to leave. And she mentioned it very briefly about three times with no juicy details, no cliffhangers of maybe something happened, maybe nothing happened. Pete's felt the need to say where he was while she was out, like like his aware, like his whereabouts and needed, needed to be accounted for while she was away. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so she was, she looked high as hell in the video. So she was either imbibing, um, having some edibles, very tired, or just having a good time otherwise. So at any rate, we know what it was. I know, I we know. We know what it was, and I found it very, very distracting. Thing is, though, she's been on camera before with a bit of a buzz on. And yeah. that's and that's whatever. You know, it's legal. She's yeah. in her country. She's an adult. Um, Absolutely. And it's not like she's, well, she's not doing it on camera. I, though right. I think I've seen her eat a piece of chocolate, maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me. Uh, but at any rate, so the the food comes, and it's piles of Burger King. Her prerogative, but it's such a contrast to the video I watched the day before, you know? So she gets enough food for, you know, like three people. And to her, whatever, she doesn't finish it. She leaves a little on the plate to be dainty. There was a half a Whopper left. Um, so she says, you know, during it, comment below, Team Whopper or Team Big Mac. This is how the conversation's going here. Not that it needs to be, like, meet the press. I understand. Um, I'm not trying to take, like, a superior, like, look at this, but it could be something a little different. And, uh, okay, the chewing with the mouth open. Okay. So oh! Mark was having a fit. Now, I, I, just, I, I try... I can't stand it. I'm I, sorry. I'm trying to keep quiet, but... I now. tried to reiterate to Mark that a mukbang, this is just part of the gig. This is... It's, it's not for my ears, either. I don't care for it. But Where in it does it state that mukbangs have to be done chewing with your mouth open? Well, I did a little research. Oh. And I was looking around at a couple folks. And okay. Stephanie Sue was someone I, I fell onto. Noteworthy, she's a mukbanger who is rather slim. She's not particularly large. Um, also, the cat's making noises. I'm sorry. I was a bit <laughs> concerned. Um... Also, she chews with her mouth shut. <laughs> and even when she does talk with her mouth full, she's very dainty about it. Now, dainty is as dainty does, but uh, it's not a requirement to do that. Just 
Just saying. Also, she doesn't look like she eats as much as she actually does. It looks like she nibbles a lot in the beginning and then tells stories and she's not putting as much down. But for 2 million subscribers, hey, she's doing something. So, so again, the question, what happened to BB? Dinner, grab some stuff, movies. Then Pete's digresses in that he's watching Star Trek for The Voyage Home, which is one of my two favorite Star Trek movies in the series. This is the one with the whales. Is everything okay? Okay, everything's okay. So, the cat. is my baby. He hates me, but I love I'm him anyway. sorry, I was trying to be discreet. He had a fur ball, and I, you know. Okay. <laughs> you have to understand. Like, that's my... I don't have any kids. That's the closest I'm going to get. You know, especially not having kids after, never mind. So, uh, Pete's is going to also watch Star Trek VI. He, she says, this is why you're single. And then she looks at the camera and said, this is why I'm single. Um, Chantal's killing me with the side eye she's throwing at him during this, though. You know, she's just, I was laughing. I was actually laughing. This is the first time Chantal ever made me laugh out loud at her video at something that wasn't meant to be, oh, that poor woman. Or, ugh, that's so... Not my taste. It was something where I thought she was actually being funny. Uh, Pete's is on Twitter. And if you're not made to Chantal, Pete's will block you on Twitter. We just joined Twitter. Everything happens so fast. Mark monitors our Twitter account, even though it's mostly my name. So, uh, yeah. Check us out on Twitter. I'll put that down later. And again, no juicy details from um, her time with BB. Nothing to be said. I mentioned last week at the end of the video, I thought maybe something could happen. Maybe it won't. I didn't know if she'd mention it or keep it on the low low or mention it later. Or I think she wanted something to happen. Mark thinks she wanted something to happen. Now she's said in the past, and that's not just making stuff up. She's said in previous videos that when she's driven over to BB's, she's had overwhelming feelings of wanting to sleep with him on the drive there. So her words, that, you know, that that's come up. And they were together a long time. And maybe the sex was good. And she's just a woman. So, you know, that came up. But was that what he wanted? And was that satisfied when they were overnight? Not that she needs to tell everyone who she slept with, but, you know, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. So, sidebar. Okay, this timeline is very sticky. So we're all in this together, and I did what I could, because the videos for this went up, went down. Community posts, a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So one Miss Charlie Gold does reactions to Foodie Beauty, other people, but almost Foodie Beauty exclusively, especially because Charlie Gold was on a hiatus for a while. She's another reaction channel. She's got about 120 plus thousand subscribers. Chantal's covering around 80. She's just under 80. And congratulations on the growth of your channel. Um, it's a good benchmark for any of us, no matter what our content is, to, to grow the channel. So... Charlie does reviews, and she pretty much runs the full video and adds her commentary. So that's the part that's supposed to be transformative and um, add a new angle to it. So it's um, fair use and, and that other thing. So Ch Charlie does a re and they have a history. They have a history. Um, so Charlie does a review of one of Chantal's videos, the Burger King binge. Uh, and she called it Foodie Beauty BK Pity Date Recap Mukbang. And then Chantal, if I'm following, goes live and reacts to that reaction. So there's a lot of lives that went up, down, up, down, up, down. Then Chantal makes another live. And there's this discussion that weaves its way into, into one of these lives about Chantal. And she's in her car, cleaning her car, saying that she received an email, allegedly, from could have been Charlie Gold, may not have been probably not have been, but why not drag her name into it? Because Charlie's gold name was mentioned, Charlie Gold's name was mentioned in the email. Um, that Chantal better not X, Y, Z. And um, I guess Chantal's mother's personal information, uh, as far as she could be doxxed, was listed in the email. So Chantal's mother's name, address, and all that kind of stuff. So there was like a threat there of change your behavior or I will do this. And so Chantal threw out some strong language of do this, do that, da, 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 don't F with me. And so that went that way. Then I think Charlie went live. Okay, and then Chantal made another video, another rant. There were so many. It was so hard to keep up. So Chantal ended up making like boom, 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 three lives back to back. And one of them, during a few of these, okay, 
And I can understand Chantal being pissed about someone taking her whole video and redoing it. Now it is, there is the whole point of it being transformative and adding something to it. I try when I even talk about her videos to not just, um, regurgitate what she did, but to try to at least analyze it a little bit, or relate, because believe it or not, I relate to Chantal a lot. And I don't feel good about that all the time, but I do. So, <laughs> as Chantal was reacting over multiple feeds, um, she has one that's particularly vicious video, and she goes at Charlie very hard. And I don't know what we call them these days. Microaggressions, maybe? And some other not-so-kind things flew out of Chantal's mouth. She would label them low blows. Other people may call them something a little bit different. Examples would include... Um, Charlie looks like a criminal. Uh, she comments on Charlie's features. Uh, BB wouldn't want you. And she called her Charlie Cole. So she said all that. And it stuck. And then she got flooded, flooded with um, backlash for that. So there were a few community posts, a couple two tree. Now, starting off, Chantal was taking the high road of being on the victim end of things. And she wanted to clap back, so to speak. And I will give Chantal this. She has earned pretty much every clap back she wants to give. She takes a lot of shit. She takes a lot of shit. She takes some constructive criticism, a fair amount of hate, and some of it is completely vicious that I've seen. Um, she's a semi-public figure, and if you're growing your channel, you clearly want to be more of a public figure. And some of it is par for the course, but she gets some really vicious stuff said to her. So she posts originally about YouTube's updated harassment policy and bullying policies, and how it talks about repeatedly going over the person's video over and over, targeting them, um, using their footage, that kind of thing, pulling out examples of things Charlie said about Chantal. The only thing is, Chantal was not part of a protected class. Maybe as a woman? I don't know. Uh, Charlie is. So, <laughs> um, as a woman and also as um, a black woman, she would be too. So, I, you know, that's, it's all very sticky. It's all very sticky. Um, and people have a lot of different feelings about it, too. Kind of like, well, is Chantal a racist? Is Chantal not a racist but said something racist? Is she just an idiot? Was she just hot in the moment? Is Charlie Gold playing the race card? People have very strong feelings in a lot of directions. And I don't think it has quite blown over yet. So she posts all this about, you know, using dehumanizing language. Ch Charlie called me a pig. No one targets anyone more than me and Amber Lynn over all this stuff. Again, her and Amber Lynn attached at the hip. Um, why target the same obese individuals over and over? Um, YouTube has these policies to protect creators and their content from leeches who hope to make a quick buck by hopping on the hate train. <laughs> okay. And then the next day, dirty deleted because it feels dirty having such things on my community post. I have had enough, but I will continue to do what I can behind the scenes and not use my platform to promote this. See you guys tomorrow. I have a special video for you guys. I don't know the challenges of having to file paperwork across the border into another country to take action. I suspect it's a little complicated because when you do stuff like striking and other things like that's legal stuff. That's not like YouTube goes and slaps them on the wrist necessarily. There's a little bit more involved from what I understand. So, uh... So the drama continued, and Miss Beauty Beauty posted again. Also, and honestly, the last time I address any of this drama, it is not, I deleted my last live stream because despite what is said about me daily, I don't feel right insulting anyone back. I'd rather be the bullied than do any bullying. So brave. Um, and I will not allow anyone or myself to drag me down to that level anymore. I'm just going to go back to focusing on my videos. So that sounds like a high road kind of thing. Um, there's no accepting of responsibility for anything that she said. Um, but, okay. Next day, <laughs> hours later, because they're all screenshotted because she took them down too. I'm going to be trying out a new series for all of my foodies called Around the World. This I'm into. I'm not into you fighting <laughs> and throwing around racial epithets and racist language around with other creators. Around the World sounds great. So, Sorry, that's work stuff. Okay. 
Then we get to, is Chantal a racist? Is she a bigot? And here's Chantal's apology, sort of apology, apology. Okay. Hi guys, I just wanted to say there's a lot of accusations about me being a racist because some of the things I said to Charlie Gold. Most of us don't have to, every six to nine months, remind everyone we're not racist. Most of us don't. Um, do people say stupid things thoughtlessly? That maybe be is, you know, our grandfather speaking, our racist uncle speaking, and it creeps out of our mouth because it's stuck in our head? Maybe. Maybe. Um, does that make it acceptable? It explains it. It doesn't excuse it, possibly. Um, and I think Chantal sort of acknowledges that she sort of takes responsibility, and I think she apologizes to Charlie, but not necessarily anyone else, if you know what I mean. Well, here. Wanted to say there are a lot of accusations about me being racist. At the time, I called her Charlie Cole. It was impulsive and out of extreme anger. I also threw some other insults at her as well. Low blows. I thought so too from when I saw it. Being totally honest, I did not think of Cole in relation to her color or race at all, and more of a word that sounded similar to gold, but was not as valuable. How long did you have to think of that afterwards to justify it? <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? I am apologizing, however, because on further thought, I can understand how black individuals may be offended by this, and for that I apologize. I apologize for how black individuals may have been offended. If you spin that sentence around, it's not really an apology. That was not my intention. I did send Charlie a private message apologizing for the insults, as I consider them to be a low blow, and even if I'm being insulted, I never want to hurt others with my words and feel terrible. Okay, so she apologized to Charlie. That, to me, is on the up and up. What else could she have done but apologize? And she noted it publicly. I don't know if she had to tell all this she apologized to Charlie. Charlie would have known, and she would have known. I don't know if Charlie would have told anybody, but the real deal would have been there. But she let us all know. And she did express some regret with it. Am I going to split hairs because she didn't technically... No. What she's saying is she knew she screwed up and she's trying to either smooth it over, which she should do, or apologize, which she did. But then she edited it. <laughs> couldn't just she it couldn't leave well enough alone. Just couldn't leave well enough alone and be as gracious as you could be after getting called on the carpet for making a racist comment. Incidentally, I don't think Chantal is necessarily a racist, um, but she did say some racist stuff. Um, edit. I want to add importantly that I will no longer be addressing this drama. Remember a day ago when she said the same thing? If you come here looking for it or comment hateful accusations, you will be blocked. People kept coming to our channel and saying we were racist. I'd be tempted to block them too, especially if it was like over and over and over. But her channel, her prerogative. I also will never understand how there is outrage over my comments toward Charlie, but the same people will be perfectly all right with her insulting my looks on a daily basis. So she apologized to Charlie and then said, Charlie does the same to her. So, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Mark? Yeah. Do you have a second? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So the, the bigger thing was Chantal trying to deflect you know, being a racist. Yeah. Now, people say racist things. Yeah. But being a racist is like an identity. It's like a thing. Right. Now, how many things, how many racist things does a person have to say before you can go, you're racist? <laughs> like, <laughs> is it, is it one? Is it five? Is, is it, it ten? One, yeah. yeah. Is it about a person's looks? Is it about their work ethic? Is it about their, her right. wig? Like, right. what is, you know, what is it about? Right. I don't know. I it's don't. a very sticky discussion to have, it is. period. And I'm a white guy. I have the long end of the stick. So it's a very <laughs> sticky discussion to have. It is. But bottom line is, is that she, bottom she line is, should have known better. Yeah. And I personally think she knew exactly what she was saying. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't. Just an opinion. I think she knew exactly what she was saying. Absolutely. And I think she thought she could cutesy her way out of it. And when she couldn't, she had to just put out an apology. Yeah. And then, and then still had and then to, had to edit the to apology. Couldn't, couldn't just graciously say, I apologize. I was out no, of line. No. Let me let it go. But you say things to me, too. Mm. Petulant. Petulant. I don't she know. She probably stomped her feet, too. I don't know. And some of the stuff was, like, deeper than than just, like, saying, oh, BB wouldn't want you. It's, it's not uncommon, from my understanding, uh, for... 
white women to try to paint black women as undesirable to black men. Just, you know, I didn't live in Scranton my whole life. Um, <laughs> so there's like some other stuff going on there. And she looks like a criminal. Mark, do you have my mug shot on hand? <laughs> I think it's in the kitchen. Uh, lest there be any bombshells should Mark and I get big, I got a mug shot. He has one too. So, you know, why do I say that? People do change. Leopards don't always change their spots, but sometimes, you know, sometimes we get our shit together. So as to all that, wrapping it up with the last couple videos, there was a live dine Chinese food with Pete's. It was about a two hour live. Pete's was in the shower when it started. She asked her viewers to help her decide what to order. And it was kind of, it was kind of a cool concept. She sat down, she ordered the food in real time. It was delivered and they ate. So it was actually not bad. She talked about being able to take constructive criticism, but not about her life, just about her content. And then I called it boring and she got mad. Well, somebody else must have called it boring and she got mad. Um, she talked about, if you want to play the race card 101, go to Charlie's channel. So, um, oh, there we are. Okay. I'll cover that info. There's my mug shot. See? Steve. Look at my puffy drunk face. What? Yeah, you look like a criminal. Don't I look like a criminal? Straight up criminal. Don't I? Why don't I look like a criminal, but Charlie does? Hmm. So, at any rate, Pete starts talking about how You Are My Sunshine is a breakup song. Um, these are the bullet points. You know how I do lives. I go, shh, shh, and whatever I land on, I report. Chinese food looks good. Who is General Sao? And is it General Su, Sao, Cho, or Chow? I don't know. Um, we were playing pronunciation. I grew up, my father pronounced it General Chow, but then it was General So as I got older. Um, I, I'm not certain myself who he is, but the chicken is great. So Chantal sings a little more. They talk about true crime in Canada and someone asks for Pete's to say their name on camera. Then she makes some Somali food. Sukar, which is like a beef stew, and some sambusas. This is the new series from Cooking Around the World. I really like the idea. I think it's very cool. Um, she makes the food, cooked it on camera, really like it. She was talking about eating with her hands, and that's that's a really slick way to, like, do, I don't want to say piggy stuff, but, like, I have the feeling, like, feeders and people that like sloppy things, kind of, would prefer her eat with her hands, and it's a little messy, but if it's in the tradition of that culture to eat with your hands, it's apropos, but it still satisfied people who like to have a little bit of gross stuff while they're watching someone eat, so... Could have been a good segue. Um, she gave some information on Somali culture, um, talked about camels as, you know, such. Pete's knew about Somali pirates. Um, and it was interesting to me because I know very little. At first I caught myself, I said, I know so little about African food. And then I was like, like Africa's one big thing. Like there's not countries and then regions within countries where things are different. Um, so it's cool. I was interested in watching it. And the food looked okay. I don't know if I'd make that particular dish, but um, it was interesting. So where do we go from here? Well, I think there's going to be ongoing Charlie Gold drama for a while. Whether or not... Because Charlie Gold's going to keep making videos about her, I think. And that's her prerogative. It's her channel. And if she's not violating terms of service, no matter how mad Chantal is, she can keep doing it. Um, and no judgment on Charlie Gold. It's her channel. She can do what she wants. So, I don't know. Uh, probably more, a little more drama in that direction, I would suspect. Um, this is the longest stretch of mukbangs in a row that I've seen from Chantal. Uh, as far as her life off camera, because we don't know what she's doing, and she's reminded us we don't know what she's doing, um, will she have a weight loss change of heart, or a full belly meltdown, the no hair messy one? I almost hope she does, because if she was an extremely thin person, a very, very thin person who talked on camera about, you know, maybe not eating much. I'm thinking of like Eugenia Cooney or something like that. A person who for a long time did not address the fact that they were extremely thin, but it's like so obvious. You're, you can't help but be curious about what's going on behind the scenes when a person is visibly, um, you know, not well. And especially when it's like you're doing the opposite of what most people would think would be 
good for someone in that situation. And again, it's nobody's business, but it creates curiosity too. So I don't know if we're going to have it. I almost hope that she does. I think she could use a break. She complains after the fact that fast food makes her so sick. The next, not only the next day, but after a bender of it for a few weeks. Then she'll have the insightful, I was in denial, I try to pretend I don't have an eating disorder, get back on meds for a little bit and see how that goes. My hope is that one of those times it'll stick a little bit. Um, I would love for her to get a place where she could have like, I don't know, a Big Mac once a week. Get her fast food and that's as satisfying for her and she goes on with her life. Um, I like Chantal. I don't just like Chantal. I'm a viewer of hers. Um, and I'm glad this week wasn't boring. It kept things interesting. So, we shall see. Crystal Ball, I do not have, unfortunately. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and bell on the way out so you get the alerts. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark, or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and our contact info is all listed down below. Thank you once again, and we are going live tomorrow night at 6 p.m. So if you're available, please feel free to drop by. We're usually live for about an hour. Pretty chill. It's an open chat. We talk about whatever, whenever comes up. And uh, it's usually a good crew. Pretty quiet. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.